location of the gas plants, the relocation of the gas plants, the processes around those and the disclosure of the information. There were things that happened that should not have happened. Oh. I have a responsibility to the past, but I have a responsibility to the, the go forward. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sarah McIntyre filling in for Jerry Agar, who is attending his son's graduation ceremony in Texas today. Very happy, Dad. But let's get right into it with the new revelations out of the gas plant scandal. Uh, the new court documents today show that the Liberal Caucus actually paid a boyfriend of a senior staffer to come in and wipe out the hard drives of over 20 computers. To join me to talk about the latest about this revelations is NDP MPP Jill. Busan, he's joining me via Skype from Timmins. Thanks for joining me, Jill. Good to be with you. So what do we make of the latest uh, revelations? We've got this production order, um, which basically details uh, some of the timelines of what happened in the Premier's office with respect to getting access to data and, of course, the boyfriend of Deputy Chief of Staff Laura Miller, Peter Feist, actually coming in, being paid by the Liberal Caucus to wipe out t the hard drives of over 20 computers. Well, it's, it's pretty damning. Listen, uh, anybody else in this province or in this country, if you were in a court and you were a matter of a, a proceeding of a court and you destroyed the evidence that the court needs to judge on your particular case, the judge would lock you up. It's as simple as that. You can't tamper with evidence. And what's galling here is not only did the premier's office tamper with evidence, the Liberal caucus paid to make it happen. Uh, the, the, I don't know how anyone, you, you can't make this stuff up. If you're trying to write a uh, sitcom or trying to make a political drama, you couldn't make this stuff up. The Liberal caucus paid somebody to go in and use military software in the premier's office to delete and destroy data that was being requested by a committee, and that's akin to essentially tampering of, of evidence. Yeah, and I think that's an important point you bring up, Jill, that it was actually during the testimony uh, and committee hearings in the legislature into the gas, plant sca gas plants scandal that they actually um, required this work. They asked Peter Face to come in and conduct this work. And the fact that it was paid for by the Liberal caucus, to me, suggests that they knew that it was wrong. Well, of course. Like, why else would they have deleted the documentation? Like, this is really, like, this is so bad, it stinks. The long and the short of the story of this thing is, is that they knew that there were emails and documents that would lead back to some pretty uncomfortable questions that they would have to answer as to the decision on the cancellation. Instead of just fessing up and doing what other, everybody else in Ontario has to do, which is take responsibility for your action, mm -hmm. they decided to destroy the evidence. If you were before a court and you destroyed the evidence, the judge would lock you up. Why can Kathleen Wynne and her friends destroy evidence and as essentially have their friends pay for it in mm -hmm. the Liberal caucus and not, not be accountable is beyond me. Yeah, and that's something that I think the NDP has been calling for is, a resum is for the legislature to come back, is that right, so that the committee that's looking into the gas plants can actually call these two people in front of the committee to actually face some tough questions and provide some testimony. Well, the, the Premier herself is saying she wants transparency, she wants to be open, she wants to do the right thing. Well, here's the chance to do so. Uh, three weeks ago, there was a chance for us to have those people come before committee. If the government had voted with the motion that we had in the House, an opposition day motion, uh, they voted against it. They didn't want those people before committee. Uh, now we have, now we know why. Once we see this OPP report, the information is pretty damning. And so if the Premier is really serious, if Kathleen Wynne pretends to be a progressive, uh, open, transparent Premier, she should call back the House as we have suggested have the committee have the ability to call these people before the committee, ask them the pointed question that needs to be asked, and in the end, somebody's got to take responsibility. You and I, we break the law, we have to pay the price. Why is it that Kathleen Wynne and her people break the law and just decide, well, we'll destroy the evidence, we won't even worry about it. Yeah, and I, where was Kathleen Wynne when all this was transpiring? I mean, she claims to say that she didn't really have any knowledge of that. Is that a plausible claim no, that she can not. make? She signed the cabinet document that, that essentially started this whole process. So she was a member of cabinet, and in order to get the authority to go and do the negotiations with TransCanada and others, uh, she was the one who signed the order, for the, the order of cabinet to make that happen. And you know as well as I do, these matters are discussed at cabinet. She was mm -hmm. a member 
member of cabinet. She knew. Uh, she's pretending now as if she didn't. And at one point, it really gets galling, is that you can't tamper with evidence and destroy documentation and get away with it. And that's essentially what these people are doing. Well, what's next in terms of the police investigation? They're still uh, conducting an investigation into some of the deleted records. Is, is that right? Yeah, there, there's a couple of points here. First of all, there's criminal laws mm -hmm. uh, having to do with the destruction of data. A government, uh, government or a, an opposition member cannot destroy information, data on our hard drives, or that could be utilized as part of a file. So if I'm working, for example, for the city of Timmins on some funding file, and there's something in there that I don't like because I said something to somebody or whatever, if I'm found to have deleted that information, it's against the law. You cannot do that. You have to hold the information uh, so that it can be gone back and taken into account to whatever decision has been made. It's the same thing with government. So there's possible charges under the criminal under the law having to do with what they have done as far as the destruction of data. But then there's also the question of the legislature. Mm -hmm. What most people don't recognize, a court of law and the legislature are equal in power. We both have the right to subpoena. We both have the right to call for evidence. And you cannot refuse. If you do, you're found in contempt. And so what this government has now done is that they were contemptuous in destroying data that they knew the committee wanted. Why? Because it was damning. And that you can't do. If I went to court and I was involved in some sort of a case and the judge found me uh, to have paid my neighbor's wife to come in and to destroy the data, there's a few people that would have some questions to answer and somebody would go to jail. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me, Jill, to talk about the latest. And I just want to ask you one quick question. What were your thoughts on the decision by Glenn the NDP MP to step down and run for the Ontario Liberals. Uh, I know you're from you're in, in Timmins, you're from the North. Uh, what was your reaction as an NDP MPP? Well, we felt we felt pretty pretty we felt pretty much as if we'd been you know sort of it was a traitor kind of a move. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn had worked with New Democrats for a long time. He's been chastising Liberals federally and provincially for a long time. He gets in a disagreement with the caucus and he decides he's going to run as a Liberal. Listen, Liberals have no friends in Northern Ontario. If you look <laughs> at what's happened to our economy, uh, his move is nothing more than him trying to do something for his career and has very little to do with the people of Sudbury. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Jill. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We're going to take a quick break. And on the other side, we're going to talk, continue talking about the gas plant scandal and see what, if any, political fallout there will be. Stay with us. At what moment did I know that... That the emails, uh, I, I, I don't, I can't pinpoint the moment. What I can say to you is that I, uh, I felt that it was very important when I came into this office that we make sure that all the information that uh, we had was made available to the committee. That we broaden the, uh, we broaden the process, and we make sure that any information uh, that needed to be retained was retained. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I can't exactly uh, uh, pinpoint. That was Kathleen Wynne dodging questions from the media on when she knew uh, about the gas plant scandals and the deleted uh, emails. Joining me to talk about this a little bit further and kind of break down exactly what's at play here is Rebecca Thompson, Sun News contributor, and Kevin Godet, Sun News contributor as well, but have both kind of been on the inside of government. Well, Kevin, you've always been an advocate for change um, to talk about this. Then let's let's go back to the beginning of remind your viewers what we're all talking about. Rebecca, if you want to start at the beginning, when, when the first decision of the Liberals to cancel this gas plant and why they did it. So this dates back to well before the last election in 2011. The Ontario Liberals realized they were in trouble because they were building 11 new natural gas plants. Two of them were in communities that they were threatened to possibly lose an election. Well, they decided to cancel at a very hefty cost to gas plants. They did it very hastily and it cost a lot of money. Now, now, wherein lies the scandal is that McGinty, the former premier, and his staff, realizing that what they had done in terms of the process was costing Ontarians what now is $1.1 billion, was a scandal. And what opposition have said is a, is a cover-up. Uh, this went all the way to the Auditor General. It went all the way to the Privacy Commissioner, both of which, both of whom, particularly the Privacy Commissioner, pointed their finger at the government saying that this is a cover-up. You deleted emails. So what now we've learned today which is the big news is mm -hmm. that the Ontario Provincial Police who have an investigation in, into this in a release document shows that the former top dog the term uh, uh, staff member to the premier 
deliberately asked for these, and no, this is all alleged, this has to be proven in a court of law, but asked for these government computers to be wiped clean of all emails and records related to the controversial cancellation of these two gas plants, and paid 10 grand to an outsider who happened to be the sweetheart of another uh, McGinty staffer. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Laura, Laura Miller's boyfriend, Peter Faist, who has paid 10 grand to come in and clean out these computers. Now, what I thought was really interesting out of these um, OPP documents is that the, it wasn't taxpayers that paid for this. It was a Liberal <laughs> caucus that paid this $10,000, which to me, in and of itself, suggests they knew it was something wrong that they shouldn't be doing because they didn't put it on the taxpayer tab. They actually made sure that it was the caucus that was paying for it. So, Kevin, now sometimes it's always the cover-up is worse than the actual crime. Is that the case here with the Ontario Liberals, is that their actions afterwards are actually the, the criminal actions and perhaps the the only the only political follow they'll face is as a result of their cover-up and not necessarily the crime. Well, I'm not sure if they're going to face any political consequences, I'm afraid. They've managed to get through two elections in a row, regardless of these nefarious activities. Um, it seems pretty clear that if there was a crime committed, it wasn't the bad policy choice to cancel the gas plants or the poor moral decisions to lie about it or cheat or hide information about it or destroy information. It then becomes, as you point out, the bigger issue really then is that they undertook, it appears that they undertook a conspiracy to destroy information involved in a criminal investigation, which ought to be, in most circumstances, a serious crime. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that the OPP are, uh, have a fire under their butts. It's been a year and a half plus since this investigation was begun. Not a single charge yet has been laid. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like the OPP are dragging their feet. And remember, their police union endorsed this Liberal government during the last election. They appear to have a conflict of interest, in my opinion, on this. Yeah, I, Rebecca, I was going to say, I, I as well had said that I don't think that it's the appropriate investigative body to be <laughs> looking into the Premier's office and, and into these allegations. But, you know, this is, I, I think you've got uh, Peter Faist and Laura Miller, the two key players, are actually living in British Columbia right now. Yeah, and this is, you know, a lot of people have speculated that um, Kathleen Wynn has escaped any criticism because of this gas plant scandal. I mean, in June, the Ontario public elected her a majority government. Yeah. That said, uh, she could actually face some criticism in 2015, given the fact that she decided to protect uh, Laura Miller and Peter Face, these two nefarious individuals that, of course, these are all, all based on allegations, uh, uh, could, you know, this could result in the smoking gun. And the fact that she's protecting them by, by allowing them not to come back to be te to testify before a committee means that perhaps that Kathleen Wynne has known about this cover-up and is willing to keep the cover-up uh, going. Hopefully the police and Constable Duval, who's the one who did this investigation and asked, you know, interviewed senior, se senior civil servants, interviewed David Livingston, uh, interviewed various others, uh, to try to get to the facts, hopefully this, you know, the, what comes to the surface is that there will be charges laid, for example, breach of trust against David Livingston, if, uh, in fact, they uncover these details. Yeah, and that's really, I mean, I, you've worked in government, I've worked in government, uh, you know how secure uh, data and information and getting access to personal computers, there's a whole IT department, it is a separate department, uh, you can't change the administrative password on anything, because it is considered giver, government uh, property, and so if you bring an outsider in, which is exactly what David Livingston did. He brought in an outsider, gave him an administrative password and said, go t go wipe out these 20 um, hard drives here on the in the Premier's yeah, office. Yeah, and just one point to that is the police asked the senior civil service head, Peter Wallace, specifically about what you just said, and his answer was to David Livingston that the only organizations that did not maintain records were criminal organizations. So clearly the civil bureaucracy, civil service did not feel comfortable. Feel comfortable helping and therein lies why Peter Face was brought in. All right well that's all the time we have on this. Hopefully we'll still continue talking about this in the days to come because there has to be somebody to pay a price for this. Thanks so much to Rebecca Thompson and Kevin Goodett.